in a very competitive industry, a very competitive industry in terms of who can, on a daily basis, be the most idiotic. In the stupid Olympics, cable news interests really honestly sweep the podium. I am very well aware that I'm a part of this industry, but I like to try at times to stand apart from cable news because it's a real big competition into idiocracy. We saw a Grammy, Emmy, Oscar nominated entry yesterday from The View. The host of The View, notably Sonny Hostin, along with Whoopi Goldberg and many other, they took on the problem the problematic popularity of WNBA superstar Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is, of course, the former Iowa Lady Hawkeye who set records and is quite honestly revolutionizing women's basketball. She's now made her way into the WNBA where she has brought with her something like 3 million people, record ratings for the WNBA. Instead of this being celebrated, we have to start analyzing how this might be problematic. And the ladies of The View had no problem in identifying the privilege of Caitlin Clark. It's not superstar privilege. It's pretty privilege. It's tall privilege. It's white privilege. I give you the medal front runners in the stupid Olympics, The View. I do think that there is a thing called pretty privilege. There is a thing called white privilege. There is a thing called tall privilege. And we have to acknowledge that. And so um, the, part of it is about race, because if you think about the Brittany Griners of the world, you know, why did she have to go to play in Russia? Because they wouldn't pay Because her. they wouldn't yeah, pay her. They but wouldn't yet, pay, not because she was black, but because they didn't believe well, well, in, that, in the know, WNBA. This is, this is part of my point. So yeah. now, you know, sh Caitlin Clark is bringing this money, these sponsorships, we hope, we hope into the league and other players will benefit yeah. from it. But I do think that she is more relatable to more people because she's white, because she's attractive. Just a spectacular performance in the stupid Olympics. You know, I've had some friends, people that I respect say, well, don't, don't call things stupid. And I respect that, that it's just unnecessarily ad hominem and it is, it is reductionist. And, and I, I, I appreciate that, you know, take the arguments on as, as they are. But I also can't let decorum and taking the higher road divorce me from reality. You know, I can't, if someone deems it offensive, decline to notice that the sun rises in the east. And when a statement is so utterly not just stupid, but more importantly, as we transition to substance, hateful and ugly, we have to recognize reality. Let's start with how hateful and ugly it is. The view. It really has become a hen's nest of venom. In this instance, what we see here is several individuals reducing a human being into her most superficial characteristics, attributing her popularity to her skin color, to her height, to her physical appearance. And in doing so, they've managed to ignore reality. The reality is, as I said, that Caitlin Clark owns the record for most points scored in women's college basketball. She's revolutionizing the game, at not just the collegiate, but soon, I'm sure, will be the case, at the professional level in the same vein as Steph Curry. She's unguardable. She can shoot from the logo. She see passes, distributes the ball. She is an absolute superstar in the WNBA, and that has nothing to do Honestly, with not only her looks or her skin color, but it really has nothing to do with her height. Caitlin Clark is quite simply a superstar, and that makes her popular. Let's address some of those different types of privilege. First of all, pretty privilege. If we're being real, I've never heard someone say that she's hot, Caitlin Clark. She's not benefiting from some kind of Anna Kornikova effect. You remember Kornikova, the women's tennis player who was good, and that should always be pointed out. Once you arrive at this stage, do you know how good you are? Like, has anybody ever raised any children in a competitive sports environment? To even arrive at the stage, you are in a 1% of the population proposition. But Kornikova wasn't perhaps as good as her hype, as her stardom, because she was beautiful. And there are examples of that. But that's not, in my, you know, 
anecdotal research, something that is being said or giving to the popularity of Caitlin Clark. Tall privilege. Okay, maybe, yeah, in society. But don't we have to kind of look at circumstances and how they present themselves? Is Caitlin Clark popular because she's taller than you, your average female? Because in the WNBA, where her popularity is being compared, I think the point is against other previous and current WNBA players, she's not tall. She's six foot. I mean, I don't know where that puts her in the average of WNBA players. Obviously, within men's players, that would be below average. In fact, I just read an article in The Athletic this morning about the evolving heights of various positions in the NBA. If you're curious, 6'3 for the point guard, 6'5 for the shooting guard, 6'7 for the small forward, 6'8 for the power forward, and 7' foot for the center. I mean, there are girls in the WNBA approaching, what are they, 6'8", 6'9"? Caitlin Clark's not tall in context. I don't know how she has tall privilege. And then let's address white privilege. First of all, to reduce her to her skin color is not just ugly. It's not just venomous. Again, recognizing the sun rises in the east, acknowledging reality, it is racist. Yesterday, we had, I think, one of the most, um, one of the most, not controversial, but taboo reality discussions that we've had here on the Will Cain Show. You should go back and check it out. It was with Jeremy Carl, the author of a book called The Unprotected Class, How Anti-White Racism is Destroying America. What you see here is anti-white racism. Like, no one else's race, and let's set aside the stupid dichotomy that the world has been reduced into black and white, Latino, Asian, nobody else's race is constantly pointed out as a reason to diminish their accomplishments. And that is exactly what's being done here by Hostin. She's diminishing the accomplishments and the popularity of Caitlin Clark because of her race. And that, to me, is quite clearly racist. Now, let's indulge a thought experiment. Let's say, okay, what if Caitlin Clark's race is contributing to her popularity? In fact, you know, I've had that conversation here on The Will Cain Show in the past, and I've contended to you, even if it is. So what? Why is that problematic? In that people, especially in sports, are attracted to, meaning gaining their fascination, gaining their attention, gaining their ratings, gaining their popularity, to anomalies, to outliers. Do you think Danica Patrick was as good of a race car driver as the attention that she warranted or earned? No, but she got it because she was an anomaly. She was an outlier, a female race car driver in a field of men. Tiger Woods, also superstar. I mean, in a discussion with Jack Nicholas for the greatest of all time. But his race certainly was a part of the national conversation and part of what gained attention for Tiger Woods. I mean, we had the conversations openly, and those conversations weren't problematic. They were celebrated. It was, oh, look at Tiger Woods. He's bringing bigger African-American audiences to the viewing public for golf. Not only that, Tiger Woods inspiring a generation of black golfers to embark upon a sport that was traditionally white. Tiger Woods was and is an anomaly, an outlier. And that's always what we see in sports, physical outliers. I mean, in their physical attributes, certainly the case in basketball and football, and in their accomplishments in every single sport. And so even if Caitlin Clark's race played some role in getting her attention or popularity, why is that problematic and not to be celebrated in the same way that it is with Tiger Woods? And the answer to that is because everything has to be so impossibly stupid and hateful and divisive. That seems to be the project. To reduce us to our tribal instincts and tear us apart and divide the United States of America. Let me give you another story going on right now. I want you to take a look at uh, a headline from CNN. It's It's a repurposed article from the New York Times. This is about... Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito, New York Times, another controversial flag spotted outside a Samuel Alito property. So the original entry in this big story is that outside of Alito's home, he flew an upside down American flag. Now what you're looking at is on his vacation home, he's flying what's called the appeal to heaven flag. It's a pine tree on a field, a white field background. Now, the argument that they're making on CNN and in the New York Times is this reveals Alito as an insurrectionist or a sympathizer of insurrectionists. Why? 
because some people on January 6th, and by the way, this is news to me. Some people on January 6th flew the flag upside down. Some people on January 6th flew the appeal to heaven flag. News to me, and, and to be quite honestly, I'm pretty plugged in on American history, and I happen to like flags. You can't see it in my studio, but I'm surrounded by flags. Right? I got the Tennessee, United States, Texas, Longhorns flag. I've got the Texas 1824 flag here. This is the revolutionary flag of the Republic of Texas. I've got the come and take it, the Gonzalez flag. I've got the original Bonnie Blue Texas flag behind me, Montana, the Gadsden flag. I've got flags all over me. I never heard of the Appeal to Heaven flag. So I had no idea that now El Lido has been outed as an insurrectionist. And by the way, the Appeal to Heaven flag, it's a Revolutionary War flag. It was flown by George Washington's unit in the Revolutionary War. But now, because someone, or let's say half a dozen people, brandished that flag on January 6th, it has to be reduced. And not just the flag, American history increasingly, which, by the way, was founded from insurrection, but American history reduced to unpatriotic. That's the point. And they're going to be successful in this project if they don't receive some pushback. I remember years ago on ESPN, I had this debate with Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman about the Confederate flag. The argument that I made at that time was the Confederate flag isn't exclusively and therefore only uh, displayed by racists. That it also has some cultural connections to heritage, to the South. I mean, I'm, I'm, ob I'm objectively, factually correct about the history of the Confederate flag. It doesn't mean it is, hasn't been also used by racists, by the KKK. But look, Leonard Skinner incorporated the Confederate flag. I think the country band Alabama incorporated the, the Confederate flag. The General Lee, shown on network television, incorporated the Confederate flag. Was that because all of those institutions were saying, hey— I'm anti-black? Or were they saying, hey, I'm proud of my heritage in the South? I'm going to say that not only our goodwill and benefit of the doubt, but an accurate understanding of people's motivations in history would show you, oh, there might be multiple meanings to this flag, but no longer. It's this, even me acknowledging that could be deemed controversial. And, and so all now that the Confederate flag can mean is racist. And everyone now knows that, by the way. You'll never see that flag in any other context. No way a band from the South would, would embrace the Confederate flag. And that's the project's going to reduce the appeal to heaven flag. And by the way, it doesn't stop at the Gadsden flag. It doesn't stop with the sign of distress, an upside-down American flag. I saw a TikTok video this morning of a guy on a beach, you know? I, I don't know where it was, in Florida, maybe California, on a beach, a, a liberal offended by the fact that people have planted some American flags on the beach because the American flag is now a sign of MAGA. And so you erase, you reduce everything, including our history, not just our symbols, but the history itself into something inherently unpatriotic. Everything divided. That takes us back to Caitlin Clark. Um, you, you know, the, the, the competition to be stupid in cable news is a competitive one. It is hard to rise to the top. But by dismissing Caitlin Clark's superstardom as pretty privilege, as tall privilege, as white privilege, what you have done is you have put yourself as the leading contender for not just the gold, but also the silver and the bronze. In order to ensure their victory, the members of the view went on to say something like this in support of the WNBA. They said, some of these girls are better than what you're watching. Some of them are even better implied here than the NBA. No, she's a superstar. But Caitlin Clark is not better than anyone in the NBA. No one in the NBA. You know why I know that? Otherwise, she'd be playing in the NBA. So congratulations to The View. Congratulations to the New York Times. Actually, sympathy to the New York Times, because in this news cycle, you don't make the podium. Despite reducing American history and symbols in an effort to get rid of Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito to the most divisive things in America, you didn't manage to make the podium in a news cycle where the view swept the bronze, the silver, and the gold. It's tough, but they did it at the view, the stupid Olympics.